Yo, what up, y'all? What up, what up? We are back for another episode of the Wholesaling Blueprint. We're so excited for our guest today. But before we get into that, I'm your host, Mr. Terrence Alberta, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Eddie Pando. Yes, sir. Let's get, Let's get it. How you doing today, big enough? Oh, amazing, man. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing amazing. I'm excited for our guest, man. The yes, one sir. and only, my guy, Mr. Geronimo Reyes. How you doing, brother? Man, amazing. Bless. Let's go. Let's yes, get sir. it. All right, man. So, Geronimo, I know you're extremely young, right? But you got a lot of good things going on for yourself, brother. So, the first thing I want to tell you, man, is thank you so much. Much gratitude for you joining us here today, man. Man, yes, it's sir. a pleasure being here. Thank you guys for having Absolutely, bro. Yes, Absolutely. So, Geronimo, all the people out there, man. Tell us who Mr. Geronimo Reyes is, man. Where, where you from, where you started, you know, all that good stuff, and how you ended up in real estate. Yes, sir. Man, so uh, I'm 25 years old. I grew up on the south side of Oklahoma City. I uh, went to Cricket Oak uh, Public School. Uh, you know, I came to this country when I was like a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, so I came to this country. You know, my mom put me in school. I ended up, you know, going through school. I was the first one to graduate in my in my family here in the oh, United sure. States. Let's go. Uh, Let's get it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, so I was one of the first ones to graduate you know, in my family here in the United States. Uh, it was really tough, uh, you know, going to school and going through the whole process due to the fact my parents didn't speak Spanish. So I would come home and then, like, trying to do homework and all that stuff. So yeah. at one point, like, I was trying to get school up. Yeah, I, I ain't never thought about that, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but, you know, I grew up on the south side. Uh, and the way I I started in real estate is I've been in construction my whole life since yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I started working with my dad when I was eight years old. Um, and since then, uh, you know, construction has just been pounded on my head, yeah. you know, so. by one way or another like i try to run from it and is there you know yeah so i end up starting a construction business when i was 16 years old and after that you know dealing with all kinds of investors i met you along the way as well yes, uh, remember meeting you with eric Perl. Eric Perl, yeah, yeah. And you and uh, Kevin, Kevin walked in, yes, walked sir. In, in there. I still remember that day. <laughs> Me too. That's crazy. It was probably like six years ago or something. Like yeah, that. it was a while ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. So way before any of this uh -huh. was a thing or me even thinking of real estate. Yeah. You know, so it was just working with different investors, you know, doing work for different investors. And they kept just like telling me, hey, why are you doing money for us when you can go out and do it yourself? Yeah. But, you know, being an immigrant, in this country and trying to think of real estate was like way out of my world. It was like, I couldn't really process that in my yeah. brain, you know, yeah. due to the fact that it's like, where am I going to get funding? Where am I going to get, you know, this, how am I going to be able to close without an ID? You know, all kinds of different things was going through my mind. Yeah. So big shout out to James Jackson. He's in your mastermind yeah. now too. Um, he was the one that pushed me to start in real estate. He was like, look, I got you a house and I got you funding. No, yeah. excuses. no excuses. No excuses. So he like yeah. literally handed it to me. He was like, all you got to do is get somebody with a, with a social and an ID to close for you. Yeah. Open a little seat. So I was like, man, how am I going to do all this? You know, I already had my my construction LLC, but I started that with my DACA because I had got my DACA. Mm -hmm. But it had expired in the time that I was trying to open a new LLC, so I really couldn't do that. Mm. So, long story short, my brother had just turned literally 18 when that happened. Mm. So, I was like, man, this this is like God yeah. trying to get yeah. me to do this, you know? Yeah. So, he turned 18 and I was able to start an LLC and get everything done in time for closing. And I literally told him, I was like, hey, look, we need a little bit more time to try to close it due to the fact, you know, I got all these different scenarios. So long story short, we got it, we got everything done, operating agreement, LLC, everything, and we got it closed. Yeah, and Same. that was the first deal I did. Man, I flipping home, making it happen, bro, making it happen. So like, we talking about where you were, where you are a little bit. We're gonna dive in on that a little bit more, but I want to rewind, bro. So you know, going to Crooked Oak, going to Crooked Oak School, getting into construction, kind of being around it your whole life, right? What? Besides other people, right, influencing you and things like that, like, 
why did you why did you jump into trying to flip bro like is it or or real estate at all like why not because you already knew construction you had a good business you had people who wanted to what made you like make that decision and what was it like bro taking that first risk mm. so i'm gonna back up a little, even more than that okay uh to when i started my construction business okay. right so i really didn't want to do it i was only 16 years old when i started crazy right yeah my first business and I never thought I was going to do that, right? So I was in school, you know, doing the whole school thing, playing yeah. sports. You don't think you're going to start a business at 16. You're dealing with girls and all that other stuff, you know? Yep. Yep. So my dad had a stroke, mm. right? And he had a stroke. So literally, it was like my mom had savings my uh, from, you know, what my dad was working. Yeah. So my mom started talking to me. You know, I'm the oldest son of the family, so... He, she started talking to me, to me and she was like, hey, look, the funds are going down. You know, this is going down. Like, more than likely, if your dad doesn't snap out of this, you're going to have to drop out of school, work with one of your uncles, and then I'm going to have to work as well. Yeah. So we can, you know, keep the family going. Yeah. And, you know, I have younger siblings. So, therefore, it was like all the pressure was on my shoulders at that time. You know, so... One of my cousins, he 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 started talking. To, I started talking to him. I was like, "Hey, look, this is what's going on, A to Z." I was like, "What can I do?" He was like, "Look, your dad, your dad already does the construction. You know a little bit about it. You guys got the guys that can do the work and all this." Because my dad was already doing like side work, you know, construction mm -hmm. and working eight to five in the construction business. Long story short, I end up. My cousin ended up pushing me to start a business, you know, and he helped me from, you know, filing LLC, getting an EIN number, the whole nine yards. And he pushed me into a corner where I was working for a big construction company. It's still around Mallard's Construction and Roofing. Yeah, yeah. And I was uh, I was a sub to them, <coughs> and for many years, uh, I worked under them, you know, till I was able to grow my wings and fly off and do my own thing in the construction, and I just kept growing from that and just being around other people so that's one of the biggest things that helped me start a business you yeah. know having yeah. to put family on my back you know so that's one of the biggest things that helped me start yeah you know that was a, a reason i had to do it man yeah. that's crazy bro yeah i think it's crazy man that's verified 100 percent. that's verified 100 percent. no i mean i think that that's crazy i think that you know um a, a lot of times being a big brother, you do have that. But, you know, the value of having both your parents, a lot of people kind of overlook that. But you, you were blessed by having your dad and your mom. You know what I'm saying? So when talking about your story, how do you think that benefited you, bro? Having your mom and your dad kind of being in the same home? Because a lot of people don't. You know what I mean? So how, how do you think that benefited you, benefited you? It benefited me due to the fact that they came from Mexico illegal into this country, right? Yeah. So it was like. They were doing everything they could to make sure we we went to school and yeah. had a better life than them, sure. right? Yep. So, therefore, they're immigrants. They're here working, doing whatever they have to do to be able to give us a better life than they had, right? Yep. So, therefore, I can never give them an excuse because they left their house millions of miles away yep. to come here to give us a better life. So, it's yep. like I literally cannot give up. No yeah. matter what the case is, hundred yeah. percent, bro. That's beautiful, man. No yeah. excuses. 100%. No excuses. No excuses at all. I feel like, man. I feel like I, I always take it personal when people complain about this country. Yeah. Just because what people give to be homeless here, to just mm -hmm. be homeless, mm -hmm. and people die on the journey getting here, whether it be from you know South America, Europe, Asia, anywhere, you know, other parts of North America like Mexico, and uh, I mean we're really really blessed, like you said, to for the opportunity. So there's really no excuses. And that's what I love about having immigrant parents is, you know, no excuse, nothing yeah, flies. You, you, you got to you, you you do it. give them an excuse at all because yeah. they literally gave everything. They could have died on their way here. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you should take that as an example that you should never give up no matter what. Because we have it really easy here in this country. Yeah. You know, due to the fact that, like, you know, we have public schools for free. In Mexico, you got to pay for that. Mm. You know, for books, like if you're going to a private school, Mm. So, you know, here in yeah. America, literally anybody can go to school. 
yeah. yeah you know and you have to pay college and all that stuff after but in mexico literally from grade school all the way to you graduate that's crazy so it's like real tough you know and yeah. everybody makes minimum wage over there in mexico like mm-hmm. it's crazy like 50 bucks for the whole week working over there yeah. you know so like they come here to the united states and they get paid you know four or five hundred bucks a week they're they'll kiss your toes mm-hmm. yeah 100 crazy bro it's, it's crazy and i remember when i would go back i'm pretty sure you probably well i don't know if you have experienced it um but when you when you see people in mexico just even like little kids like eight years old when i, I remember when i was eight seven and i would go and my parents would be like look you know like they're out there hustling like they're not going to school they're mm-hmm. out there just trying to help their family survive you know selling candy and stuff on the corners like that's something that always touches my heart mm-hmm. yeah and that's one of the things that helped me too you know that always never give up and always yeah. be hustling always trying to see how to be better myself due to the fact that it was like seeing my parents do all this stuff to be able to help us so it's like i have to hustle i have yeah. to be able to do it you know because i'm an immigrant my myself so it's like i couldn't just go get an eight to five job yeah have problems mm-hmm. at mcdonald's yeah i had to literally work i only had two jobs you know uh one was doing dirt work and the other one was mowing grass but, yeah and they're all family like family owned business mm-hmm. and they were both tough on me you know i'm an immigrant they were tough they, were, they had me doing all the hard work <laughs> and you know one was my uncle and the other one was my cousin so it was like all bad yeah so <laughs> so they literally were like slaving me Eight yeah. to five. So and like after that, <clears throat> that now that I own a business, I try to, you know, run my guys and try to do the best I can to yeah. keep them going and motivate. Yeah. I want I want to ask both of you guys a question because yeah. I know that I know yeah. that uh, you know all of us believe in God. Yep. 100%. Right. And uh, in different situations in 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 both of y'all's lives, do you feel like do you feel like uh, it was there for a reason? Like God put you guys in that situation, like. I know the unfortunate situation with your father on the stroke and probably different situations with you, Tess. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like God put you guys or like put you guys in that situation and made that situation happen for the greater good? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Because there's certain things you go in through in life that if you wouldn't go through that, th- that, that certain thing in your life, you wouldn't be able to go to the next level and be able to appreciate that. 100%. Yes, what do you think? What do you? Th- I, I like that question. I want to dive in on it a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Which of you? What is a moment that you can think back to where you were like, no doubt, this is God, and this is a test from God, or this is a moment that really helped like catapult me to be who I am today? You know, from y'all's perspective. Man, I would say I had one today. Man, I'll say I had one today. Um, I feel like I've been kind of just focused on my business and focused on the grind. Yeah. And I w- and I hopped on the phone with the seller, and she's you know she's a Mexican lady. Yeah. And uh, it's it's Arnulfo's mom, mm-hmm. so because we have a deal going on, you know, she she did some private funding on a deal. Yep. And uh, man, so you know, like I said, you know, I have you know, I've just been focusing on business, not really being as grateful as I should, you know, like yeah. you know, thanking God for even being alive and, and all that. Oh yeah. And uh, man, she told me a story, bro, that just it just it just gave me the chills. Like she told me a story of uh, I guess they had they had somebody that they knew that was in, in, in prison. And, uh, you know, of, you know, of course they were getting away from, from God as well. And, uh, you know, she said, she said, Hey, you know, pray to God. So, you know, he did that night, you know, he prayed to God. He said, God, if you're real, he's like, show me you're real. So the next day, uh, like, I guess a lady from the ministry came and then she said, uh, I guess she just pulled him over. Like she, I guess, you know, like there's, I guess they were like in rows or something like that. Like they were like there to speak with her like a classroom something. And she said, she said, hey, I want to let you know that, that God is real and God has your side. You're not going to be here too long. And then the, you know, he ended up getting out of jail and being the case like a month or two later. That's correct. That's correct. And that gave me the chills, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah God, like, is, God is real. Yeah. I feel like that was a conversation that, I, you know, that I just needed and just to never forget that, that everything happens for a reason. A thousand percent, bro. Yeah. Thousand percent. What about you, man? So, to me, like a couple months ago, I was going through a real tough time in my business. Yeah. It's like, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes we like go into like deep tunnels where we, where we forget what we got going on. Yeah. You know, we lose the momentum and all that stuff. 
So me and Eddie had a tough, tough conversation because uh, mm -hmm. I was like in a deep tunnel, literally where like I had my literally my head in my ass. Yeah, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't making money. First of all. Yeah. You know, like not paying attention to my kids, my my personal life, my yeah. health, all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And literally, I asked Eddie for a favor, and he did it right. Yeah. And I feel like we meet everybody for a reason and we encounter people for a certain purpose. You know? Absolutely. Bro. So literally we Eddie called me and he gave me like a A to Z conversation, you know, preached to me. He literally was like, This is what you need to do, this is what you know, broke it down. So I really feel like you meet every single person and and for a reason. Yeah. If it wasn't for God, it, it wouldn't be like I don't think it would be possible to uh, to get to where you have to be without God, you know. So he puts right. everybody in, in your life for a certain reason to That's either true. grow or to learn something. Yes, yeah. sir. I love it, bro. One hundred percent. And for everybody watching, um... that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's very <laughs> fun. So for everybody that's watching, man, even even if you know. Like Jeromino said, he was doing bad. And, you know, I feel like I feel like I got away from God because I was doing good. Like, because I'm doing better and better. That sometimes I forget to do, like, you kind of forget the minimal things that, that got you here. 100%. And, you know, for everybody, whether you're doing good and you're doing better or, you know, you're in a rough spot, you got to always, always have that gratitude, man. What what about a situation in your life, Tess, that you kind of had a moment like that? Yeah, bro. Um... Well, there's a situation in my life that was pretty tough. I, I you know, we, I got a lot of them. I, I'm older than you guys, right? So, you know, like you said, there's um, there's good, and I love that the way you articulated that, and I definitely want to get to mine. But I love the way you said, you know, it can be bad, and you can find God there, but you can also you can lose you can lose God in the bad, you can lose God in the good. Like either yeah. way, it's all about. But it's a constant pursuit, man. It's like 100%. It's, you know, um, the faith and all. That's nothing that you obtain. It's something you just kind of chase every day. You know what I mean? Having faith is, is, is not tangible. It's, it's literally not tangible. It's nothing that you can have. Um, you got to exercise it. 100%. You know what I mean? And if you're not exercising, it's going to grow weak, you know? Sure. Um, and that's the thing about faith. But there was a time in my life, man, where um, I had everything on the line, right? I had a girl uh, that was pregnant. Um, I left an all commission job. I had no um, um, experience in selling houses. I didn't know what I was doing. But I put it all on the line because this girl was pregnant. Now, in this all commission job, I didn't have any health in insurance, any, anything like that. And I had a son coming. So, you know, me being who I am, I was just like, yo, like, I have to be able to have insurance or something. I was only making like $2,000 a month um, in this sales position. So I was like, man, I got to be able to have insurance at the minimum. If I'm making $2,000 and I got insurance, cool. Like, that's that's really all. I, I wasn't hoping for more than that. But God had more in store, right? But I, I put it all on the line, man. I, I got outside my comfort zone. I put on a suit, you know, I did all these things, got the job interview and got the job and she was pregnant and she was probably like six months pregnant. So I worked at that job for like a month and a half, bro. And uh, we ended, she ended up losing a kid, had a stillbirth. Um, she had to deliver the baby and everything, bro. She had to push the kid out and both of us knowing that the kid wasn't alive. And uh, she was, she made it almost full term, like eight, like, almost, like eight months. And um, the entire reason that I got into real estate, the entire reason I wanted to know about it, the entire reason I, you know, that, that I even put everything on the line was for this kid that was no longer there no more. You know what I mean? Um, and that moment was one of the toughest moments I experienced in my adult life, um, probably in my entire life. I don't wish that on my worst enemy. Like as a man, you know, the protector of your kid, that's what you pride yourself on. Like you wish somebody would try your kid. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm there for. But it's different when you don't even have the you don't even have the option. You know what I mean? Like the option is taken away from you. You know, so then you just kind of feel helpless as a man. It's kind of like, dang, you know? And and again, I didn't I, I still was like, yo, why am I even trying this real estate thing? Like, I don't even think I like am I even gonna be good at this, you know? So when that moment happened, bro, like I was like Man, I just gave it to God. You know what I mean? I was just like, yo, this is all. And then the following year, I made, you know, I was on track to make like $34,000 that year with my current job and the job and the goals that I had set for myself. And 34 was a lot. The following year, I made $152,000 with, with, uh, in real estate. You know what I mean? So um, in that position, it absolutely changed my life. And, and because of that year, they promoted me to be the sales manager the following year. 
every time I would talk to my mom, because I would just try to bury my kid in the back of my mind, bro. I didn't go to his gravesite for over a year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was hustling, grinding. I didn't go to his gravesite. You know, and my girlfriend, who I was with at the time, her parents, her family owned a funeral home. One of the most known funeral homes on the east side of Oklahoma City in the black community. It's called Temple and Son Funeral Home. If you're black, you've been to a funeral at Temple and Son, you know. Yeah. Um, one of the most, yeah, one of the most popular freaking, co like, and they are, they are paid people. Um, but, you know, I couldn't ask them for money. I didn't want to ask them for money. They didn't really like me like that. You know, I was like this thug at the time. And uh, anyway, so her dad came and picked our kid up from the hospital. So I never had to do anything in terms of arranging the buried baby being buried or, you know, the baby, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So what we did was, for closure, they had him in the, in the, um, in the, in the freezer, you know, and the, you know what I mean? And we went by there and we saw it. So I saw our, our son, uh, his name was Kai, uh, Zayden. His name was gonna be Zayden. And I buried, like at that moment, I buried in the back of my mind and I went back to hustle. Uh, they gave me two weeks off. I went back after two days. And I was like, I, she was crying and stuff. And my dad told me to be strong for her. Don't, don't cry, right? He's like, don't cry, you gotta be strong for her. Yeah. Um, but she misinterpreted it. Right? Cause I cried, bro. It was a moment when I went back there to see the kid by myself, and uh, I was with my dad, and I crumbled, bro. I, I remember, like, I couldn't. I had no feeling in my knees, bro. Like, I couldn't stand up, right? Um, and um, I don't even want to imagine that, man. Yeah, bro. That's... It was crazy. And my um, and and but my girl at the time, she never seen me cry, you know. And the way the way that I didn't know I was like this was the way that I am now is anytime I'm going through pain, I really put it in my work. You know, mm -hmm. I really don't. I really don't show my emotions. And I just go to work. So what happened is uh, and maybe this trained me to be that way. But what happened is uh, like she was crying and she was moping around the house. And I feel for it, bro, like way more than me. Like She deserves way more empathy than I do. Um, but, you know, I was like, yo, I got to get back to work. Like I got stuff to do. And she, she was like, are you serious? Yep. I gotta go make some money. Like I can't, and I always say this, bro, and people laugh, but it, it means the most. I cannot be depressed and broke. Yeah. I cannot be depressed and broke. Like having money is gonna make me feel better. I just don't know how to put it. Like, like if I'm depressed and I allow that to keep me from making money, I'm just gonna be more depressed because <laughs> bills coming tomorrow, regardless of what you got going on. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, oh, you need don't care about nothing you got going on. But it's time to cut the lights off. They yeah. cut them off. You know. Like, <laughs> Well, I lost my kid. All right, well, we can get over it. We'll be here, but the light's going to be off in the meantime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and yeah. that's the truth. So anyway, I went back to work, you know, and uh, and because of that, it really tore us apart, man. It really tore us apart, bro. I mean, it was bad. It, it became a really bad relationship. So we split up like two weeks after, I mean, two months after that. So yeah. here I am, fresher real estate. The reason I got in is my girl and my kid, and I don't have either of them no more. Mm. You know, so, yeah. you know. I really trust a guy, but I'll be honest with you. Um, I wasn't a godly person in 2017 because uh, I was making more money than I ever had. I was single, mm -hmm. you know, like it was crazy for me. You man. think that has helped you get to where you're at today? Thousand percent, absolutely. That trial, that trauma, I can tap into something now that's like, it's not many trials where I feel like anything outweighs the pain that I felt then, you know sure. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I will say this for you guys, man, because <clears throat> you guys are younger than me. <clears throat> I lost my grandma a couple months back. And one thing that I didn't do is I didn't spend, I, I prioritized my my work above relationships with my family. And, uh, and and you know what I always thought is like they understand, you know, they good. Like I'm trying to hustle and I'm working for them. But, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, in the essence of everything that you're, you're doing, you got you to gotta really get to the core of what you're doing it for. And if it comes back to monetary gain and worldly gain, that's fine. Just make sure you identify what you really, really want out of this life. And if it's mm -hmm. riches or if it's to be known because... You know, you can be you can be extremely wealthy, right? But a big reason why I'm coaching is because things like tonight we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a top producer in our in our entire company, right? Yeah. And we're giving away. You know, we're talking to people, we're having a good time. It's five people, you know, ten people, twenty five people in this room. But one day it's gonna be two two thousand people. Is my goal. I want it to be two hundred fifty thousand people. You know what I mean? That's what I want because when I die, all y'all are gonna have a different story about me and my funeral. Yes, so I'm trying to do something that's greater than me. So I'm trying to do something that's bigger than me. I'm trying to have all y'all, all my younger guys and guys younger than y'all. Like y'all didn't know Tez, like y'all sons, like y'all didn't know Tez. He was a great guy though. We're going to his funeral today. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like things like that because you know if everything that y'all are doing it for. Be mindful, just like the story that that, that, that lady gave you today. Yeah. She wants you to be mindful of God's glory because, you know, 
the thing that matters the most is the relationships. Like like Geronimo said, he did not have a great relationship with his kids, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, it's so easy for us to justify and put stuff on a back burner because we feel like we have time. Bro, both all of us could die when we leave here right now. Yeah. Today. Yeah, so, over yeah. With. Yeah, age ain't got no, death ain't got no age on it. You know what 100%. I'm saying? Death has no yeah. age. So we have to get that out of our head. We have to be intentional. So I would advise you guys, like now, Sundays, committed to my family. I do not do no work on Sundays. My girl, if she wants to do an open house, she has to have somebody else do it, another agent in our brokerage. Yeah. Like, we don't do that. We don't do no work on Sundays. And I go chill with my grandma or my mom or my, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we can afford two hours, guys, out of our day just to call our mom real quick. You know, I time block every night, mm -hmm. right? So I have my big three dominoes that I have to put, I put, have to push down. It's actually six. My big three dominoes, I have three personal and I have three business. And then I have, a to, then I have my time blocks blocked out. So, you know, you can have a to-do list, but that's just going to keep you busy. That ain't worth nothing. Come up with three big dominoes. At the end of the night, you're like, okay, I knocked out my three big dominoes. At the end of it, I had 60 things I could have done. These three were, it's actually going to move the ball forward yeah. for me. So I got three business. Boom, boom, boom. Knock those three out. Three personal. And one that's be personal for me, some days it'd be get my girl flowers. It'd be, you know, get, call my grandma for 15 minutes. You know, call my mom for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It should be three personal. And, bro, at the end of the day, end of the week, I'm like, cool. Life in my personal. So I love you guys a lot. But, you know, there's going to be moments in your life where you're like, like, I didn't think I was going to be buying my grandma's house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I own her home now. My grandma who passed away. Because of real estate. So you guys are on a great path. You guys are killing it. And I hate being this dude in the room because I am the oldest in here. Well, one of the oldest. In here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 you know, I, I pulled Curtis aside about an energy drink the other day. I just care about you guys so much that you, yeah. you got to know, man, this this life is so much more valuable than just the tangible, you know, you know, money thing. 100%, man. Damn. I feel like that's a lot of wisdom given out because especially when we're on the path to success, we're just focused on the next milestone and the next goal. Yep. Where you know we're not we're not really focused on on just the gratitude of the day to day man of us having our legs of having our eyes us being alive. Or actually enjoying the moment. Yeah, enjoying yep. the moment, enjoying the present. We're just enjoying what we're doing. Yeah. yeah, bro. It's tough too. It's a thin line between enjoying it and being complacent. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's a thin line, and trust me, guys, I haven't found that line. I'm not telling you this because I know how to do it. <laughs> I feel it's kind of a little easier. Those big three. Cause bro, yeah. I, I'm always, I'm, I'm constantly like, you wouldn't believe the pressure that I feel from me. Nobody put pressure on us except us, you know. And no, you guys wouldn't believe the pressure that I put on myself. You guys wouldn't believe some of the conversations I have about myself. After big, I'm talking like a lot of money I've made. Times where I'm just like, it's not enough. Yeah, I ain't got my name on a jet yet. That's true. Yeah. I ain't got my name on a jet. I ain't got a, you know. My brother is serving, bro. My son, they gave my brother 10 years, and he's only on his third year. He has to do 50% of the time before he comes up for parole. That's my baby brother. One of the hardest gangbanging dudes i ever seen. All of that cool stuff that I thought was cool. All the stuff that's not cool that I thought was cool. But things like that. Like, I have a goal that when he comes home, he comes home to a house and a car. You know, like, I have I have goals, bro. So, But the thing is, is, like, we have to be able to look back on what we've accomplished and see something, man. Do you feel like, do you feel like the way that you do it is... And being in the present is that you give Sunday that day. I think so, bro. It's like Sunday is the day to be present. Yeah, 100%. I don't answer my phone. I don't really talk to nobody on Sunday. Because, I mean, think about it, bro. Think about Chick-fil-A. Like, if they can do it. If they can afford to do it. Everybody right there waiting on Monday morning. They've been closed all Sunday. And Monday yeah. morning, they wait. People waiting lined up. What's going to happen? Because we did it at Roush Coleman. I worked at Roush Coleman. They closed their doors because the owners of the company became friends. And he told them the psychology behind it. And this is a home building company. Like, they sell houses. They don't sell chicken salad. You know? <laughs> they sell houses, you know. <laughs> in, our most, in our most, like, we had a lot of contracts on Sundays. Yeah. So, like, the managers hated it. They yeah, because a lot of people are off. And that's when they go be homes. They All day. But he was like, if I catch you in a model home, you're fired. Any salesperson. Any salesperson, if you're even there, you're fired. Mm. He didn't even want you there. Because some people was like, no, like I got to get a contract. He didn't care. But what we saw over time is that people would rush in on Saturday to get the contract done. Yeah. Or they'll be first first thing in the morning on Monday. You're not missing no business on Sunday. Yeah, there's no, like I remember, uh, I can't remember who, who said this famous quote. There's no emergencies in real estate. Yours truly. 
That was you telling that was me, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's true, bro. That's true. When you when you really think about it, like if you get to that 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 message, or if you get to that a little later, bro, there's really no like you know most of the time the 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 emergencies are in that is is in our imagination. Yeah, most of the time we make the we make the emergencies up. I always said it. I got it from Brett Craiger though. Brett Craiger yeah. from Kivo. He always told me there's no real estate emergency. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, think about it. There's way more than just you getting paid in this transaction. Everybody's getting paid. You got inspectors, you got contractors, Everybody. everybody's yeah. getting paid. So everybody wants this deal to close. The lender, the title company, like, just chill. Don't put that much pressure on yourself, you know? But sometimes you gotta push the ball. Sometimes you do gotta, you know, yeah, yeah, go yeah. crazy, yeah. you know? Put the budget to sell, <laughs> yeah. That's fire, man. So Geronimo, man, you know, we are talking a lot about life. We are talking a lot about all this stuff. What do you think the biggest lesson that you've had, brother? From a from from when you got into real estate to where you are now, one of the biggest things is biggest lesson is would be that I learned how to manage my money. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. how to actually manage my money and hold my money. Yeah. What 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 has that meant? What has that meant for you? It's meant a lot because I've been able to grow so much in a in a rapid time. Yeah. You know. Because before it was like, before being around you guys, it was like, I was making a lot of money in the construction, but it was going out the same way it was coming in, you know, because mm -hmm. I was hanging out with the wrong people, like spending it at bars downtown, yep. clubs, yep. trip clubs, yep. girls, you know, just being with different people, you know, so that's one of the biggest things that I've learned and a big lesson in my life. You yep. understand my money would be to hang out with different people. Man. Yeah. Circle. What about you, Big Dog? What do you feel like something you've learned since being in real estate? Man, bro, it's it's a lot, a lot. I would say one of the biggest ones. One of the biggest ones that you can't go wrong with is is uh you know what, man? I got this quote actually to put it in words is uh I was looking at I was looking at the Google Drive that yeah. you that that you gave me. Yeah. People over profits. Mm. Remember that's what you that's what you called the mastermind, uh -huh. and I would say really that's that's the like to put it is when you when you build the relationships with people when you nurture the relationships with people when you put that first that's that's gonna always supersede and that's gonna always make you more money. Yeah. So it's always people over profits. Love I feel it, like bro. that's a lesson that I learned. Love it, love it. I was trying to figure out what's what? called a mentorship before Verify Flippers came. Yeah. You know, Verify yeah. Flippers. I don't know how I thought of that, bro. It was crazy. But the um, the people over profits were where I was, you know. That's really yeah. that's what I believe. But that was my theory with local guys. That's why we yeah. have so many contracts. Yeah, that's what it is, though, man. I mean, I feel like I feel like you can't you can never go wrong when you when you when you have that philosophy. Yeah. Because you, I mean, if you put people first, now I'm not saying don't make money. You got to make money. But if you put people first, money is going to chase you, like for real. If I show you my inbox for students, bro, it's crazy. Yeah, because people are gonna people see the genuine like that you're genuine and people wanna. People go out their way to do business with you. One hundred percent. Yep. One hundred percent. And if you just follow that philosophy, I love it, bro. I love what, it. What about you, Taz? What do you feel like? What is one of the biggest lessons that you learned in real estate? Man, um, I would say uh, in real estate, I'm gonna go back to losing my kid, but it showed me. But what I learned through my kid it bleeds over to real estate, and that's just the persistency, the persistency, like, mm. and 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 also having faith, right? Like, but the biggest thing is just being persistent, like being persistent and consistent. Like you, you have to consistently do the things even when they don't feel like they're working. You yeah. know what I mean? Just keep doing the things, man. Keep doing the things, keep doing the right things, keep doing the right things. And um, as you do the right things, the result is gonna come. It's not gonna come immediately. And I think that's one of the biggest things. If you be consistent, be consistent, the result is just gonna be there. And I feel like the only thing that separates the exceptionally, the exceptional, the people who do exceptionally well, the people who kill it, the people who are on top, you know, <laughs> is simply consistency. 100%. That's it, that's it. Like, you know, I've, I've had people come in the game before me. I've had people come in the game at the same time as me. And all of them has either reached out to learn about the coaching or in the coaching. Mm. Period. No, you know, that's awesome. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Um, like you know, like, you know, with love. You talked about James Jackson earlier. He was in the game before me. 
And he was like, man, I just watched how you came in. And now he's a student. And he paid me like $1,000 a month to be a student. You know, yeah. and he came in before me. But it's only because I was consistent. Like, yeah. a check does not define if I hustle or not. Yeah, because he was curious. He, he, he reached out to me. He, yeah. He put me on, and then he reached out to me. And then he was like, I got to come check check out too. I got to come check it out. And he's been doing well, man. Like, James in the Mastermind, he's been doing well. Like, I remember last week, he was like, I got too many leads. <laughs> that's what he told me. You know, and I'm like, well, that's a good problem to have, bro. You know what I mean? You got to come to the Masterminds, bro. They be lit. Last time was lit. He was out of town. But the last one was crazy. I know, I know. We, everybody was in the office. We had like nine, ten people here. And then we had people on Zoom. And it was crazy, bro. 100%, man. I feel like, I feel like that's vitally important, man. Because uh, I remember when I first heard the concept of the Mastermind. Have you have you seen or read Napoleon's uh, theory on the Mastermind? Mm-mm. Of how he, he, I think I don't know if he's the first one that called it a mastermind. Hmm. But he said he said it's it's one on one of the laws of success. And for those of you guys that don't know, pretty much Napoleon Hill think Grow Rich. He pretty much gives you step by step on how to be successful. Like if you just follow, he gives you like the key points. Okay, you do this first, but I be on. You just follow up. And uh, most of us even do it even without reading the book. But hmm. the mastermind it says that even as an energy, you start getting the energy. Of, of a lot of like like-minded individuals that you're with that's true and a lot yeah. of the a lot of the theories and um i mean there's just a lot of a lot of scientifical benefits of just being in the mastermind and and discussing theories with a lot of like-minded individuals yeah those people are next level bro um last time we, we had a uh, we got a guy in the, in, the, in the group now who does land and um he was talking about a land deal. People in the room didn't know about land. And he joined the mastermind just because he wanted to learn how to find land leads instead of the houses. And he does some residential. But, bro, he told everybody about a land deal that blew everybody's mind. And he was like, yeah, so send me all your leads. And the deal was an 80-acre deal. I think I told you about this yeah, deal. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. It's, he been like a yeah, on yeah, it was crazy, man. He had a, a, a deal. He paid uh, in McLeod, Oklahoma, I think. McAllister, Oklahoma. And it was um, 80 acres. He bought the 80 acres for 160 grand. He subdivided it, sold 20 acres, sold, yeah, sold 20 of it for that entire 160. So he got all the money back, still has 60 acres, and sold that for like $300,000. So he made like 300K for just one deal. You know what I mean? But that's awesome. he knows, yeah. you know, and he's in a mastermind. That's somebody who's in our group and he's trying to learn. So you get a land deal, send it to him. Yeah. He'll look into it. Trustworthy dude, I'm telling you. But he knows the game. He's got people who's going to close on land. He's got lenders who's going to close on land, like because they know it. So you know, being able to be in the mastermind, you're able to network with next level people. But yeah, bro. Anyway, anyway, we're talking about it last time. Yeah, one hundred percent. But shoot, man. Um, I think we spent some good time today, bro. We spent some good time. We dropped some nuggets tonight. We got a dinner, um, and uh, we're going to enjoy ourselves. Let me ask you this: What do you think is one of the biggest things? Well, you haven't been in the mastermind yet. Or long, what do you think is one of the biggest things you've gotten from the mastermind? From the mastermind, one of the, well, the one on one we had. Yeah. Is how to implement my systems in my business. Yeah. Uh, you know, because Eddie had, had already talked about it, but sitting down and actually talking to you and, you know, breaking down my goals and everything. And that's one of the biggest things I've gotten so far how to set my systems and processes and processes in place. What about you, Big Up? You've been in for, I mean, your time's up now. I mean, you pretty yeah, much done. I would say, man, I would say just that there's just that there's, there's no one way to do real estate. That there's a lot of, a lot of different people doing many different things. Yep. And then, um, like you said, land deals. And then there's people just, you know, that just concentrate on the retail deals. Just everybody has their own niche and there's not one way to do real estate. I love it. Yep. More tools in the tool belt, baby. 100%. Hey, um, we thank y'all so much for joining us. Before we leave, Geronimo, you got anything you want to leave people with? Man, if you want to take the elevator, join Tesla's mastermind. I love it, man. Sure. Let's go. That's verified. What you got, man? You got anything? What was the question? You got anything you want to leave the people with before we leave? Man, I would say thank all you guys for, for, for you know, joining in, tuning in. And, you know, thank you, Geronimo, man, for, for coming. We had a really good conversation. I feel like this one was, was very spiritual, man. Yeah, yeah. It was. Like this one, we, we got, it. I think we, I we dropped a that. lot of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope that I hope that all you guys love it just as much as, as we love this conversation. Yeah. It? Absolutely. Hey, yes, we'll see y'all later. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the 
wholesaling blueprint. Peace. Okay.